Emulators for the latest consoles. Do they exist? They do. Do they work? No. Almost never, in fact. So the last time I did one of these fake emulator debunk videos, I got pretty well received. So this time I'm going to do one on a specific genre of fake emulator. And this time it's going to be on PlayStation 4 emulators. So the first one we're going to look at is an interesting one. It's ESX. Now this is advertised as a PlayStation 3 emulator, but if you search on YouTube for PlayStation 4 emulators, this often shows up as one that supposedly does both, yet it doesn't mention it anywhere that it does PlayStation 4, but it shows up enough in PlayStation 4 emulator videos uh, for me to include it in this list, so let's take a look. The website is really well done. It's got everything. It's got a getting started, download videos for YouTube links, compatibility list. It's got a short intro. It's all parallax scrolly bullshit. Made in WordPress, no doubt. Tells you how to use it. Looks pretty legit. It's got a PCSX2 style um, compatibility list, and it takes you to a list it just says yes on pretty much every game there is and so when you download this emulator it takes you to a mega link when you download it for the first time you get this it looks like an installer of some kind you open it up and it uh, tells you to extract it someplace and it does and you think well gee that's pretty easy installation cool but when you go to said location it just gives you another um, other zip file and password protected yes inevitably what it's going to ask me to do is visit some fucking link to go get a fucking password for a fucking shitty fake emulator and when you go there it inevitably asks you to go through a survey of course you can browse the files it's just that it's all password protected and you can't actually extract them anywhere so fortunately you can use something called PK crack to open these zip files with passwords on them and supposedly what you're able to do is take a sample file from one of the compressed folders and then use it to create some kind of generate some kind of key that's used to encrypt the file and there that way you can use BK crack to extract the files I don't know how it works exactly it allowed me to extract these files using a triplet that someone from reddit generated now I'm able to actually run ESX and Wow, no surveys, no keys, no BIOS fucking requirements. This is supposedly able to boot Blu-ray discs, which isn't really possible, because if you were to stick a PlayStation 4 disc in a Blu-ray drive, it's not going to read the game data. It's, it's, it, it's an entirely different method of writing or stamping discs for PlayStation 4s, and there's a whole bunch of encryption involved. So, um, you know, this doesn't really make sense anyway, and the fact that, you know, you just press these over and over again, it makes different dialogue boxes appear, which don't do anything, you know, makes me believe that it's bullshit anyway, and you can resize these, and the black box in the middle stays the same size. You can't make an ISO reliably from Blu-ray discs, I believe, and if you, even if you did, they would still be encrypted. I don't know if that's the same case for music, but in terms of PlayStation 4, I'm fairly certain you can't just create an ISO from a Blu-ray disc and then have it as a game you can play like you could on PlayStation 2. Running Elf doesn't work. None of these buttons actually do anything. They, they're just completely non-functional. Even the exit button doesn't work. Configuration doesn't do shit, the virtual hard drive doesn't do anything, XMB, save games, noth none of these do anything. The graphics um, options do something because in the ESX video demonstration it shows like him selecting the you know, various graphics settings randomly. You know, if you're, if you're ever able to get past one of these fucking surveys and open it, then you'd be able to see these which don't actually do anything so yeah none of these do none of these do anything next thing I like to do is check out if these uh, library files or DLL files are actually anything 
like what they say they are or if they're just bullshit files renamed to look like legitimate files. So I'm now noticing that these two, 323 kilobytes and 323 kilobytes, these are the same. I'm wondering what they actually are. This doesn't look like it would be an entire graphics library's worth of worth of data though if it's only 148 kilobytes. Uh, D3D Engine 64, this is more interesting because it doesn't have any, well, it does have a copyright, but if you go down a here, you can see references for WMP lib, and that's a, um, it's some kind of library that enables you to play videos through your program using the Windows Media Player library. So that way you can insert a video and have it play in your program without it opening, uh, with it making use of Windows Media Player, but not actually opening Windows Media Player, if you know what I mean. But then there's this, and it's exactly the same thing. There it is again, WMP lib. So D3D Engine 64, which sounds like it would be some kind of graphics library is a fucking Windows Media Player library renamed. It's exactly the same size too. Something else I thought of was because this guy is able to, you know, seemingly legitimately play like footage of the PS, PS3 or PS4 or whatever. I'm thinking what he did was he made use of this WMP library in the ESX to play that footage and he he actually shows off um, like moving the window around and stuff without any like obvious footage movement in place so I'm thinking what, what he's done is he's just used the Windows Media Library to, in, to insert some footage or something in there and just have it play as soon as he, you know, presses launch or whatever. This is something to do with Microsoft. Microsoft Code Verification Root Zero VeriSign. VeriSign Trust Network. What, this, what has this got to do with the PlayStation emulator? For authorized use only. Yeah, I'm sure they got authorization to use this. Shader.dll. I'm sure that's what it says it is. Oh, what do you know? It's exactly the same thing. Is it the same size? 203? Uh, no, it's not. Interestingly, but it has the same data in it. I don't know exactly what this is, but it's got something to do with network verification. Who knows? It's most likely not shader DLLs. XMB loader.xmb, 12 megabytes, Christ. What is this exactly? Copyright, Windows Media Player, copyright 2000. Yeah, I'm sure there would be Windows Media Player data inside a PlayStation 4 XMB. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. The VHD, this is interesting. This is supposedly like the PlayStation 3 operating system or whatever. It's a fucking gigabyte, for Christ's sake. What do I need this for? You open it, what is it? It's completely empty. It's just a gigabyte of zeros. What is this? Copyright 1999-2004 PJ Plauger licensed Dinkumware? What the fuck? Dinkumware is a premier standard C and standard C++ libraries. That's bizarre. And where Where is Dinkumware located? Oh, it's in some guy's house. So GFX D3D is actually a HTML viewer DLL. It, 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 I didn't even have to look that up. It just says it in the fucking mouse over description, for Christ's sake. Lang.dll is a Microsoft Windows, is a Windows update agent library. <laughs> NLS, it's a Microsoft natural language server data and code. What? WinNXT internet extension for Win32. Again, this is nothing, none of this is actually what it says it is. And the BIOS, what's in here? Again, this is a uh, copyright Dinkumware. Hip and Rick Company. <laughs> Why would this be in the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3 BIOS? 
What a fucking joke. Something else interesting, the configuration is a sweet FX um, configuration. It's got nothing to do with an emulator. It's a bunch of graphics options for sweet FX. So the next thing we're going to look at is the first thing you see when you Google PlayStation 4 emulator is PCXS4. Some file telling you to put a BIOS file in here because the BIOS is the fucking center of the universe to these fake emulators. The BIOS files could not be found. Would you like to download the missing ones? You click yes and it takes you to some locked page at the wait 28 seconds or like or fucking bullshit. Or you know what, let's, let's just tell, tell, tell the thing to go fuck itself in, in entirety so we can get to this mirror. And it takes me to some weird affiliate link shit. You download that and then it you know, download something that Chrome automatically says, look man, this stuff's shifty as hell, dude, don't, you don't want to touch this. So you keep that and you open it and what's inside, another compressed file, setup.exe, doesn't even have a password on it. I don't want to touch that, that looks too shifty, even inside a virtual machine, I want to use this again later. So, there's no way around this error message, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at it inside a .NET decompiler. Inside the .NET decompiler, we have some code here that says, which is the same error message from here, BIOS file could not be found. Whoops. So the BIOS file could not be found. Would you like to download the missing files? Message box comes up with yes or no, critical, blah, blah, blah. And then if you click yes, it takes you to the, um, the page we were just at. So up here, I noticed there's some code that's, that, um, checks for a directory called BIOS and if it exists it comes up with a different error message so by that logic I should just be able to make a folder called BIOS and yeah the BIOS files were found and loaded which is fucking interesting compared considering there's nothing in here okay this emulator is not activated you need to activate it in order to play games would you like to activate it now Missing dependencies, inevitable. So what happens is a survey box comes up and this is just some Internet Explorer renderer. And I notice if you look in here, it takes you to FileIce, which is a notorious file host that makes you download shit, but you have to go through a fucking survey beforehand. From what I can tell, looking at this code, this doesn't do anything when you finish the survey, it just downloads, like it could just download nothing. I'm not going to go through the fucking survey just to find out, but from what I can tell this doesn't actually change anything, it just takes you through the same loop of going through surveys again and again and again, which proves that the simulator doesn't actually do anything. What a surprise. Last one we're going to look at is something called PS4 Emus. 1.2.0.exe. This one is funny because it shows up and it immediately tells you that uh, to, to fight spam we need you to enter a registration key. What fucking spam? Like, how would downloading an emulator result in you having spam? You open this, you download the registration key and it takes you to this fucking thing where of course you get sent to some list of surveys to fill out. whoop de doo so looking at this in dot peak, we can see that uh, one of the registration codes is already listed in the code. And we'll just copy that, stick that in there, submit. Registration key is valid. Congratulations. To prove you are a human, so you solve a chimp puzzle. And then you download yet another confirmation code through yet another survey. At this point, you're fucking tearing your hair out if you don't really know what you're doing. There's another key here listed in the code. You paste that in. And it said, this code has been blocked by MX3 team because of multiple using. Please download another one. And then it tells you it's not valid. So you're stuck in a rut. And there's no way of actually accessing, or accessing it or getting past those error messages. So looking at the code, it actually just sends you in an infinite loop. You paste one in, and it automatically 
send takes you to a dialog box that says the code has been blocked by PS4 emulators, emus, for using, for multiple using. Please download a new one in 24 hours. So imagine if you're some clueless guy looking for a PS4 emulator. You're told to wait until the next day to download another one. You get another one and it happens to be this one. You get another one that says this code has been blocked by EMIX team because of multiple using. Please download another one. And then when you finally download another one, it just tells you that the code is not valid. Please try again. So you never actually get to enter the emulator. It's just a bunch of bullshit. So those are the top five links to surveys, I guess, because that's really all they are. If you want me to do another one, who knows, there might be some scam Nintendo Switch emulators out by now. So let me know what you think.